Here we have a program that uh, takes an array A and a length of the array and it's going to um, accumulate a sum of all values in the array but it's going to sum those values twice and it's also going to add in the result of a function g um, each time through. And I haven't written down what g is for now. So when we, uh, when we compile this program, uh, this is similar to our very earlier example where we're looking up AI twice and adding it into Accumulate. Uh, and when you compile this program, you will see that this is the inner loop here, that there is those two uh, dereferences of A. So this one is happening. Then for whatever reason, the compiler has decided to increment the index I early. And so we have to undo the index. But you see the two calls. In this case, uh, it's not obvious that there's any aliasing, right? We're not setting we're setting just a local variable, a cum, but the reason the compiler is forced to look up the value inside of a twice instead of just once and reusing it is because it doesn't know what g does. If g is just take a number and add one to it, then yes, it would work fine to look up the value once and use it uh, all three times. Um, but if g is uh, take a value v and change uh, a global array, at that index v, where it happens that the global array is exactly the one that was passed into f, then we have something like aliasing it again, where the aliasing is not two pointers passed to f, but a pointer passed to f and then a pointer that's embedded in some other function g. So that's why uh, when we compile this program, the, uh, the compiler is forced to leave it in this mode. And let's just explore this a little bit over here. Uh, so I've got that f and g. We will look at the output and confirm that it uh, behaves in the expected way that it forces um, the two the two indirections. So here's where we are uh, looking inside of RBX and here's where we're looking inside of it again. So RBX is uh, effectively the array pointer A. And in between we have the function called G. Now in this case, the compiler doesn't know anything about G. I've just declared it, and so it must be in another file. But let's take this nice definition of G, the one that we know um, wouldn't require looking into A again. Let's try putting that in place of the declaration. So now the compiler can see G. If we try again and look at the output, then what do we get? So there's the declaration of G, which just doesn't add one. If we look in the inner loop of f, we see that it doesn't even call g at all anymore. It does a single access into memory. This one is just doing an addition um, and accumulating that result into an eax. So uh, at this case, the compiler is able to do what we had hoped, which is only look inside the array once every time. Uh, and in fact, it is inlined the function g, uh, not that addition, but this one right here, is the inlining of g. So we took the looked up value, multiplied it by 2, and added one more from g. So this is a case where the compiler is not confining itself to a single function f. It's also looking inside of g. Um, that's because we're using optimization level 2, which allows the compiler to do inlining. So we saw uh, that g was inlined. What we can do is, if we don't want it to inline g, just to explore what happens. We will annotate G like that. Try this again. Uh, that's not the right way. Ah, it's because I missed an underscore there. Okay, I can look at it again. Okay, we are in F. Go into the loop of F, and what do we see this time? We see the call of G restored, but also we still see only one indirection on RBX. So we get the result from G and we add that into R12, but the compiler is still only um, looking in the array once. So in this case, we're still using an optimization level that causes the compiler to accumulate information about G, even though it doesn't actually inline it and it exploits that information to avoid the lookup of A here. If we make G more complicated, so if we um, say that there's this global array that 
it uh, G sets. So let's have it uh, return one, but also set A at B to be zero. Doesn't really matter what we do. We can e we'll leave the no in line just so that uh, the function called to G is clear. And look again. And we will see, let's see, where is our call to G? It's going to be down here in the loop. Uh, we see we've got the function called to G, and we see that the multiple indirections of RBX are back. Uh, there's two of them, not three. So our original program had three lookups of AI. The compiler has collapsed these two because it knows everything that happens between the time uh, that this one is supposed to happen and this one is supposed to happen, and it knows that A is not modified, but it can't prove that A is not global A, and so it has to pessimistically look in AI again there.